All right, guys, welcome back into another NBA DFS video. My name is Eric Paul Zing with 9 to 5 Sports. Going to be touching on the top plays here for this Saturday six-game slate. It is kind of a sweet spot on the slate as well, being a six-game slate. Those are typically the most fun to break down because there's just enough information to get cute, I guess, with it, uh, but not too little of information where you're having to force in kind of less than stellar plays before we break it down i just want to say if you guys enjoy this coverage make sure to like and subscribe you guys have been giving us a lot of love and i do appreciate that we're going to continue to put out more nba content and with that guys i do have the lineup optimizer live on the website right now as well okay i will call out that it doesn't have the ownership there just yet it will have the projections okay if i if you guys want me to include the ownership that would be more to the cost OK, we will see if I do that for now. It does have the projections in there and I kind of have the NBA DFS content set up for you guys to come in and take the information and use it the way you want to. It's more hands off ish for me, just so you guys know. OK, but it is ten dollars a month. That's the nine to five membership included. That is the nine to five premium golf package, as well as the NFL DFS cheat sheet and lineup optimizer as well. All right. Just touching on last night's slate because it does kind of make a difference in today's slate because last night's slate there was a lot of blowouts and because of that we saw a lot of players not get their final rotation have their minutes kind of reduced which for yesterday's slate sucked okay but a lot of those teams are playing tonight you know the back end of a back-to-back -back. and now we don't really have to worry about their minutes getting restricted so that is very nice okay that is something i'm kind of looking forward to so whereas like it kind of sucked last night that a lot of the games were blowouts and a lot of the top plays didn't get their final rotations. Well, now they should be cemented into those minutes tonight as long as the games aren't blowouts. So that should be a good thing on this slate. All right. We'll touch on the plays here right now. All right. All right, so getting into the slate, there's a lot of news that we have to wait for and see to make sure that's confirmed. All right, John Morant, got to make sure he's going to play. He's currently doubtful, okay, so not expected to play. Joel Embiid, got to make sure we know if he's going to play or not. Currently listed as out, but that's because he was out on Friday. Got to see if he's going to play today. Um, Zach Levine, got to see if he's going to play. Josh Giddy, most likely out in this one. Uh, we can continue to go down. Cody Martin, got to see if he's going to play. Uh, Will Kessler, got to see if he's going to play. Um I would say like IO as well for the Bulls. He got injured during the game and had to miss some time in the game. Only played about 20 minutes. I would expect him to play, but it wouldn't be shocking to see him instead as well. So a bunch of like injury news that we are still waiting on for confirmation. Okay. So starting off, I will say yes, Luca and Giannis guys firmly in play. I, I hate having to touch on that, but I feel like I need to touch on it on every slate, but it's also kind of obvious if you can afford to pay up for the studs like Giannis or Luca do it you know it should be 60 dk points or so and yes milwaukee has a back end of a back-to-back -back in this game i'm not too worried about it you know against atlanta he still should be able to get his maybe it's only 50 dk points maybe they blow him out or something but looking at it i will start off with the others receiving bolts votes so melton i think is gonna be a strong play as well if joel and beat is out we're gonna see melton shift back into the starting role like he was in the last game okay and then he'd be coming in intriguing play saw 30 minutes in that game was able to score 38 dk points that's the second straight game in which he's been able to score 30 dk points or so at this current price point as well it doesn't take that much minutes for him to be able to add value we've seen him be able to add value at this current price point in his last three games so he should be a play that is a strong play i love the fact that we get multiple position eligibility as well with him I kind of just want to touch on all the OKC Thunder plays as well. Uh, Shy. I love Shy as a play. Shy is kind of priced up a little bit, uh, but he's the highest priced OKC player on the site. Now, last game, we did kind of see him need to take his foot off the pedal because he got four fouls in the first half of his last game. OK, that is not good, obviously. And you see the play kind of become less aggressive and whatnot. He still got most of the stats that you would want him to get. He didn't get any blocks or steals, which meant that he only scored 40 or so DK points. <laughs> It's weird, but it kind of seems like he does need those uh, stats as well to be ha to having a highly productive game. And what's weird is like he hasn't had a hot shooting night. They've all been solid, but he's been getting 20 shot attempts as well. So I think Shy makes a lot of sense as a play. I like the idea of paying up for him. It's just, do you want to pay up for him? Or would you rather pay up for Giannis or Luka, you know, find the salary elsewhere? But from there, I like all the plays like Trey Mann firmly in play. He's someone that I think will get around 30 minutes in this one. And if he does, he should be a solid play for you. Uh, you know, 5.6 cheap price point. Dort as well. I feel like it is kind of one or the other. You're playing one or the other. Dort or man, you know, Dort could easily go for 30 DK points at this price point. I kind of like the idea of playing one or the other there. We look at Wiggins. Wiggins is still very cheap for a guy that has been playing a bunch of minutes, guys. 
the last two games with Giddy out, and if he's out again, Wiggins can get right around 30 minutes, and he's been getting 32 and 26 DK points at 4.2. That is still a very cheap price point, so I think he could be a nice little price down play that you're going with. And then there are other players like Kendrick Williams getting over you know 25 minutes the last two games could be someone you're looking at for salary relief on this game if no other value opens up. Uh, Darius Baisley, a play that I liked on the last slate that he was in simply due to the price point, simply due to the value of him. If he gets 20 minutes again, he could get to 20 DK points as well. Not someone you're going crazy with, but it is a route that you can go if you need to find that value. The OKC Thunder plays, their secondary plays are all priced down is my point. You could play them. And then Tobias Harris, if Joel Embiid is out in this one, and even if he's not, like Harris could hold some value. Now we only saw him get 28 minutes in the last game because that it was a blowout. It's so strange yesterday, it's like guys, um, lots of blowouts. But he is someone that if he gets 30 to 35 minutes or so, if the game stays close, which we expect, you know, 5.8, that's a very cheap price point for a guy that should easily be able to get to 30 DK points. That'd be a play that I like a lot. And then Jordan Clarkson, I do just want to call out as well as an honorable mention play because he is a cheap price point play as well. Uh, you know, the minutes have not exactly been there, but the usage has been there. The shot attempts have been there. Heck, guys, last game, he saw 22 minutes and it was a blowout game last night. Okay, but 22 minutes, shot the ball one out of 10 times, or he shot, made one shot out of 10 attempts, zero for three, zero for seven from the three ball range. Okay was still able to score 22 DK points. I kind of like the idea of playing him because he had a poor sh shooting night last night. Like, I don't expect that to happen two games in a row. He's a player that could easily get to 30 DK points in this one and wouldn't be shocking. All right, and now to get into the core plays for this slate. So I know John Collins was the cover boy from the yesterday's video, but I think... You know, I think it was the right play. It, it, I just think so. Like the shot attempts were low, okay, and the minutes were low. Only 25 minutes. He's a guy that typically gets 36 or so minutes. Didn't get that last rotation that, you know, we typically see them get because it was a blowout. Okay, his price actually went down now. He's a guy that had been seeing those minutes the whole season, and he's a guy that did have 10 rebounds, okay? So if the shot attempts are there like they should be, like they have been, you know, 10 shot attempts or so, and the rebounds kind of stay there, and the minutes go up, like he should be a very awesome play at this price point. Both teams are coming off of a back-to-back, -back, so it, it could be a little bit sloppy, I guess, but I think the price point of John Collins just makes too much sense to me. And then same thing, Gordon Hayward, the game was a blowout, so he didn't get his final rotation as well, so his minutes were low from the last game, so we don't really have to worry about his minutes being restricted in this game, I don't think, and with Rozier still out, with Ball still out, I think he could be another great play at 6.5. I do think he's going to be able to get to 30 DK points. You know, if he gets to 35 minutes or so, he could get to 40 DK points. He's actually been pretty solid thus far this whole season. Look at the expanded usage with those players off the court. He looks like a stellar play on this slate. Then I will say Tyus Jones could be a very awesome play as well. John Morant, you know, we got to see his status. He is currently doubtful. Okay, so if he sits, Tyus Jones is a play that I think will step into a more prominent role. We'll get around 30 minutes in this one. He's already a guy that does shoot the ball a lot in a back backup role he shot the ball over 10 times four games four out of his five games so that is already intriguing to me so if you give him a few more minutes give him a little bit more usage at 4.7 it wouldn't be shocking to see him get to 30 dk points or so he's a player that i'm going out of my way to play one of my favorite plays on the slate given the value price point that he has in that same game i also do really love desmond bain at 7.4 he's a player that we already knew we were targeting a bunch but with john morant out the usage should shift up even more or the role should just be cemented like he's a player that could easily go for 40 dk points and I kind of expect him to go for 40 DK points. We knew that he had been shooting the ball poorly for the first three games, and it was expected for him to start shooting the ball better. Okay, that's part of the reason why I like Jordan Clarkson is because like just natural regression. We see that happen a bunch in sports, especially in basketball, where you know a guy has a cold night shooting one night. You typically want to go back to him the next night. Desmond Bain is kind of under that category where now he's kind of just settling into a normal disparity between his shot attempts or shooting percentage. So he's a player that I definitely will be going out of my way to play on this slate. Tyrese Halliburton is also a great play, guys. I would say he's a core play as well. Um, I like him, you know, just been playing extremely well. Every single game has been over 40 DK points thus far, and maybe you worry about the back-to-back. -back. Okay, I'm not too worried about that. Earlier this season, we saw them have a back-to-back. -back. He actually scored 50 DK points in the first game and then 56 DK points in the next game. The minutes were there. Okay. Um, he, he's just a nice, solid floor play. Okay. I'm not too worried about like the defense, Kyrie Irving, Ben Simmons, like some people might be um, not too worried about that. He should be a strong, safe play on the slate. The question is like, which guard plays are we paying up for? There's a ton of quality of guard plays and that's the biggest issue. I'll probably be having four guard plays on my builds tonight. And then my favorite play on the slate, I bet most of you guys could figure it out. 
Um, with Kessler probably out, okay, that just makes Lord Markkinen even more of a better play. Okay, he's another one of those players that last night did not get that many minutes due to a blowout, 26 minutes. So the minutes should be locked in there for him. Okay, the biggest worry that I have is that the last time we saw him on a back end of a back-to-back, he struggled. He only scored 22 DK points. I'm not going to take too much from that, although it's not a good sign. You know, that does worry us a little bit. I think he's going to get 30 minutes. I think the shot attempts will be there. I think the roll will be there. I think the rebounds will be there. He's a player at 6.9. Could easily go off for 40 DK points like he has done a decent amount of the games like he was on pace to do last night versus Denver. So he's another stellar play as well. All right. That's all I have for you guys for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a like and subscribe. That does help with the channel. And as always guys, let's keep cashing.